Hi, and welcome to the Flute Talk Podcast, where we talk about all things flute, live here on Patreon. What is Patreon? Patreon is a place for fans like you to come and support creators like us. For as little as $2 a month, you can join in on this live show once a month. Plus, we'll send you the popular 5-minute warm-up for Flutus in a Hurry as a gift for being so awesome. Plus, we'll give a shout-out to all of our patrons in our podcast. This plus many more perks and tiers await you. So why not join us over on Patreon and help us continue to make great content? The Flute Talk Podcast is also brought to you by the Flute Center of New York. The Flute Center of New York has the world's largest selection of flutes. If you need to buy a flute or piccolo, the Flute Center of New York has you covered. With our code TFC at checkout, you can try up to three to four flutes for up to 10 days, have an extended 18-month warranty, and free shipping worldwide. So be sure to go to the website flutes4sale.com. So that's flutes the number four sale.com flutesforsale.com just be sure to use that code tfc for all those perks and a little bit of that does go our way another sponsor as well ourselves we have a store if you haven't noticed yet we have a store over at store.theflutechannel.com we have some shirts and posters and things like that over at teespring so you can definitely go there and get some merch posters whatever you'd like that we have it will be there you probably notice it under our videos if you're interested be sure to go to store.theflutechannel.com that helps us out immensely so yeah on with the show hi everybody welcome to the flute talk podcast i'm nick and i'm emily so how are you today i'm kind of good <laughs> okay. so what are we going to talk about today so today we're we're um, the summer. Yeah, we just came back from California. Yeah, we had a very nice vacation. Yeah, we went to VidCon. Well, I went to VidCon for most of the time, but you came for one day. Yeah. And then we saw like a lot of California, and we went to Patreon headquarters, which Yay! is all, all. We had a <laughs> nice <laughs> tour. Yeah, we saw Patreon headquarters, so that was pretty. I played sweet. some piano in there. Yeah, because yeah, they, they have a studio there like or a jam room or something yeah they have like it's very cool the way their office is organized mm -hmm. and so there's a whole space to play music mm -hmm. with guitars and a drum set mm -hmm. and so a lot of percussions mm -hmm. and a very nice grand piano like baldwin yeah. old baldwin very nice and it's actually for the staff to play but it's also for anybody who is part of patreon like that uses patreon if they want to come artists they mm -hmm. actually have an open invitation which i would highly encourage because they say that uh, they've been trying to get people to come and they want more people to be there. And they have a record studio too, which we didn't see. It was mm -hmm. locked, but um, they do have a room there. It's where they do their Patreon like monthly uh, live uh, stream themselves and talk about like what's going on with the company. But it's a nice building. Yeah, very nice like, office. Super nice. They were very nice. Big windows, a lot of light. Lots and of food. They were, yeah, <laughs> so generous. Yeah, offering us food and drinks. Yeah, and, and stuff. Uh, it was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Jane, I think, was the who was the, who led us there. Yeah. And that was really cool. And uh, also, there was other people that were involved with that, too, and they know who they are. But if you're watching this, hello. And yeah, it was really cool. We got to see that. A lot of cool things. Taking a break from the flute for for two yeah, weeks, which is cool. Yeah, taking a break from everything and just uh, mm -hmm. recharging, mm -hmm. you know, and coming back with projects and ideas. And we, we drove a lot. And while we were driving, we had a time to talk about what we wanted to do you know with the future <laughs> yeah, so yeah totally it's good to yeah, have yeah. that time away from the um, routine the everyday routine mm -hmm. yeah it's a good thing yeah it was amazing we're very lucky yeah, yeah. if you have a chance to, to do, do that. that yeah if you have a chance to take a routine you know we always feel like we always have to keep producing or making or working you practicing know practicing you know maybe even you're on your weekends maybe take a more calming type of weekend like go out yeah somewhere or do something i don't know it's a good way to disconnect yeah planning something um away from the house even if mm. it's not very far from your house sometimes i remember uh, last year we went just for one night we left very early on yes. one morning and came back late the next day and mm -hmm. we did a little road trip but we went what four or five hours away from our house mm. but it felt like um, a whole week almost yeah. just because seeing other sceneries and yeah it's a uh, it's a good thing sometimes like sometimes we have more budget sometimes we have less but there's always a way to disconnect and mm -hmm. you know there's always a lot of free stuff you can do especially in the summer every city has things and 
things to see, things oh, yeah. to go and if you're in a yeah. big city or a middle city, there's there's so much to go and get involved and see what's happening in your own yeah own area because yeah. creatively too and also just culturally because it gets the juices flowing mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so that yeah. was fun and yeah. i hope uh, you have everyone who's listening has a nice summer and yeah. they can uh, write to us about their summer yeah we're officially past the uh, halfway through summer now so you know it's uh don't say that <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's summer. still a lot more summer left though <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a big heat wave here <laughs> big big heat wave yeah we're lucky that uh yeah we're lucky yeah <laughs> okay so summer also entails a change in the schedule yeah for a lot of people for sure for most people or students at least mm -hmm. because there's no school so um when we change our schedule sometimes it's a bit more difficult to practice as regularly sometimes it gives us more time but sometimes with all that time we are not as efficient than when we have a little bit less time mm -hmm. and we have to do it at that moment specifically But also sometimes we just need to rest and it's mm -hmm. okay. We shouldn't feel guilty about it. No. So it's good to take time away from your instrument and kind of miss it a bit, I think. Mm. And then be excited about going back to it. I think totally. it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you go back to it, um, there's different philosophies. But some people get a bit anxious. They get anxiety about... Uh, their sound or they think they lost something you never lost anything it's just uh you have to get back to it you know but mm -hmm. stay calm it's all gonna come back maybe in a day or two maybe it comes back right away sometimes what happens to me when i take a break first time i take my flute it sounds amazing second time it's not so good mm -hmm. and then it comes back the third day mm -hmm. i don't know why first mm -hmm. day it's like i'm all mm -hmm. relaxed everything I'm like, oh, my sound is beautiful. And then the next day, oh, I'm not so happy with it. Mm -hmm. And it's okay, you know, it comes back. And then also I think it's about awareness, being aware of your body mm -hmm. when you go back to it. Mm -hmm. And it's a, good, it's a good moment to really do it because sometimes we're in the, you know, the um, routine and mm -hmm. we just do the same thing over and over. But when you go back to it, it's a good time to just stop and observe yourself, observe how you feel when mm -hmm. you play. And uh, look in the mirror and check what's going on with uh, your posture, how you feel inside your mouth, how you're supporting the air, all those different things. And, uh, and also the summer is a good moment to uh, move around. And I think when we're healthy and when we move around, it's easier to play. Mm -hmm. It's true. Summer does loosen up the, the joints. Yeah. If you move yeah. more, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I remember uh, I had a summer workshop with robert aitken and he said he was playing in toronto symphony and he had a very nice career and everything then he started doing yoga and people around him in the orchestra would come up to him and say oh what happened to your sound it's like <laughs> it's better mm -hmm. than it's ever been <laughs> because he was breathing and he was stretching and sure. all that yesterday i was giving a lesson and my student um felt that he couldn't breathe fully and we just did a little exercise with our arms and breathing mm. and then he felt oh yeah i, f I breathe better now so mm. that's also a good thing you know yeah, yeah totally. to take care of your body because mm -hmm. it's a, your body is producing the sound yeah your instrument is like the um, the um, how do you say um amplifier mm -hmm. but the sense. body is producing the sound because right. If not, we would all sound the same. Mm -hmm. you no, know, if the instrument yeah, yeah, yeah. was doing the job. Totally. I always found that uh, ap like when that first day comes or something after a break, I always find that my in I'm surprised about my endurance, like how far, how long I could play or how, you know, I think people think they lose endurance, but I think what they notice is just your regular endurance to what you've already built upon already. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. You have it, and then you're just building on. Yeah, then you're building on. Exactly. Yeah. Right, right, right. And, like, mm -hmm. you know, during the vacation, we moved a lot and all that stuff. So we f were probably healthier when we came yes. back than when we left. So yeah. my sound was super good. Because you're, yeah. Then I was just being aware, and my body yeah. was in a good mm -hmm. place. And yeah, because so your instrument is, is your body. Yeah. It really is. Like, exactly. maybe even more than the actual instrument itself. Because if you don't have a vessel to work, it doesn't, yeah. the instrument can't play. Especially a wind instrument. Yeah, yeah. You totally. know, it's yeah. so, yeah. like, it's so connected. Especially the flute. You don't have anything in your mouth. It feels so much like, mm -hmm. almost like you don't have an instrument almost sometimes. Almost like you don't have one, yeah. Exactly. When you're in the real flow of things, it mm -hmm. feels like you're completely It's like you're a singer. Free, it's like you know? how singers yeah. are. Because singers, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, and singers use their bodies, yeah. you know, and yeah, so do bodies. we as yeah, yeah. Buddhists. Totally, totally. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's the per- first thing. Like, don't come up, don't come to it or to your first practice with a feeling of guilt mm. and a feeling of oh, it's gonna. Because first, w- it, you're kind of um, preparing yourself for failure, like mm-hmm. right away. If you're like, oh, I haven't practiced for two weeks, it's gonna be awful. Mm-hmm. Like, um, you know, like the saying that says, if you think you're able to do it, or if you think you're not able to do it, you're right both ways. Mm-hmm. Because you're pre- you're predetermining mm-hmm. the outcome in your mind already, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so just stay calm and go back to it with the idea that I took a rest and it's important for my health and it's good mm-hmm. and now I'm happy to go back to it. Yeah. And just uh, if you feel you have to do, like maybe you want to do exercises, but maybe you don't want to do sound exercises and you're super excited to play a piece and it's okay. It's the summer too, you know. Mm-hmm. And go with how you feel, I think, mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, because you're going with no deadlines. You have nothing really in the horizon, maybe. And maybe that's a time for you just to expand on your, cur- your curiosity, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Like you said, try pieces Play and stuff. different pieces and yeah. see what you would like to play this year. Maybe you'll, mm-hmm. maybe if you have a teacher, you'll come in in the beginning, in the fall and say to your teacher, oh, I I'd like to play this and yeah. that, or maybe listen to some flute music. You mm-hmm. know, that's also something sometimes we maybe don't do enough. Listen so oh yeah, you can learn so the true. repertoire and also listen to different sounds so you can hear what, what really speaks to you mm-hmm. and it helps you uh, build your own sound, you know? That makes sense, yeah. That's way w- it can be a really, really valuable tool to understand, like, yeah where sound is right now where music is yeah. right now or even from the past like yeah. listen to people that you like that uh it's like or, I like or listening organizations to or the Bost and i like listening to Ale marion mm-hmm. and they're not now mm-hmm. now you know they don't mm-hmm. play uh, like Ale marion is dead and the boss doesn't play anymore but they're amazing flutists mm-hmm. i like mm-hmm. to listen to them but um yeah and also other instruments mm-hmm. like on monday we decided we were gonna listen to um master class a piano master mm-hmm, class right i love doing that because yeah, yeah. other instrumentalists have different ways of seeing things and sometimes i pick up a little thing from another instrument that i've never l- heard about in flute and i've been to a lot of flute master yeah. classes <laughs> and yeah. i've read a lot on the fl- about the flute yeah, and so yeah. did you and yeah. we've picked up little mm-hmm. things from that so that's also interesting yeah. and like if around your where you live there's a festival and mm-hmm. sometimes they offer free master classes mm-hmm. that you can go listen to or s- not very expensive not very expensive yeah like invest to maybe invest in doing that if you're if you're uh, if you're doing it by yourself or if you're in an area that uh, you're not really uh, like sure about what the scene is like there's always going to be events around uh, middle middle sized cities and big cities there's there's always something at least one or two things a year so yeah. looking at the universities the colleges looking at symphony if there's one there mm-hmm. looking at cultural centers because you know there could be an artist and then an, an artist that lives there that does those types of things and you just don't yeah. know about it and you know and it's, it's uh, they're excited to see you <laughs> you might uh, be very inspired by yeah. that yeah and, and this inspiration might last you months whereas if you spend the evening practicing you know yeah it's a good, inv- yeah. good investment in and it's time also and yeah exactly it's a very good investment and it's okay to feel intimidated and like say to yourself oh maybe i shouldn't go because of this or that but really it's a normal feeling to have the go and just and you don't even see need and to play. explore yeah you, you don't just need to go play. and listen yeah. you'll still learn exactly a lot. so that's yeah. uh, something that i think i always try to encourage just go you know it doesn't uh, it's just you're just gonna learn it's a learning experience we rarely um regret those things even when we don't like it that much, like mm-hmm. I've been to master classes when I, where I was listening to what was being taught, and mm-hmm. I thought, yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. but it's okay because I still learn from the experience. I thought, oh, if I do a master class, I don't think I would do it like that. Totally. I didn't feel that pe- the people playing felt comfortable, mm-hmm. or you know, whatever. Yeah. Or I would have emphasized more on the positive things, mm-hmm. or. I might not have taught, like, some people teach a lot, like, um, they teach the person how to play exactly like them. I don't really subscribe to that. When I go to a master class and the person is saying, play it exactly like me, especially Mm -hmm. to a person that's very advanced, Mm -hmm. you know, if it's a beginner, intermediate, maybe you want to play a phrase to inspire your student Mm. and then they can 
imitate because you want to you want to work on their musicality this way by oh, imitation yeah. mm -hmm. but with someone who's more advanced maybe you want to um work with them about finding their own voice because totally. at one point these people have to deploy their wings and <laughs> mm -hmm. you know fly on their own and, and let creati creativity don't need flow you know, yeah the you world doesn't mean doesn't need two of me or two yeah. of you or two of anyone no. It's yeah. about being more of you, not like, being yeah. no a one, second yeah, copy exactly. of your teacher. Because right. I don't think, I hope it's not something that those teachers want, is to have another person play Beethoven the exact same way as they do. You know, because nobody really knows, you know, like nobody really knows how Beethoven's played exactly, right? So why not explore it together in different yeah. ways, you know? I yeah. Don't know. Because it can be an interesting way to see it. Because the carbon copy thing is just like, eh, what are you yeah. passing? It, then it comes down to this whole passing down heritage thing. Yeah. Sort of thing. But for some, for some um, levels of learning, like for some people, imitation is a very... I'm not saying yeah. imitation is not a good way to teach at all. I, I love working mm -hmm. like that with no, imitation. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I feel it's like, play exactly like me. And that... I don't yeah. really subscribe to mm -hmm. that. I don't see how it's helping the person long term, but mm -hmm. it still yeah, gets either. my brain going. Like so, the fact that I went there made me think a lot. Yeah, because so there's it other was things a good going. Yeah, to go and see. Yeah, because oh, other things are going on. What like you know, mm -hmm. and it makes you. Sm I think it makes you smarter, and it makes you you know because you go and you think and. Yep. Yeah. So. Yep. That's it for for that. I think it's a good thing to do, and mm -hmm. there's a lot usually during the summer. Yeah. It depends where you live, but. Mm -hmm. And then some people have auditions at the end of the summer. We've yep. had a lot of questions about that lately, I think, from high school students who uh, have to prepare. Maybe, like, uh, yeah, I think we know. Like, there's some Texas people that... Texas and uh, oh, every state, every state have yeah. Every state has it. That's I, would, I, I assume almost every state has their own association to be part of a state band. But like, there's also just regular auditions for their schools too. Yeah, so there's a lot of auditions coming types. up. Yeah, and so some we've had a, a lot of questions about that. Yeah, just preparing yourself, yeah. you know, if you have a week or two. And I think a very good thing to do is take a, the requirements and print it or write it down on a sheet of paper and then uh, make sure you're, you're preparing ahead because you can't learn. Let's say you have a lot of scales and you don't know them all. Well, do you think you can learn them the day before? Clearly, no. Your brain needs time. You need to sleep between. and Like we learn while we're sleeping. Mm -hmm. while we're so you need to have... It's, it's not about practicing that much every day, but it's it's more efficient to do uh, 20 minutes a day than to try to cram eight hours in one yeah. day. Plus, so you want to learn those skills for life, not learn them just to be regurgitated at one point to get into something. So you want to kind of maybe even learn to understand what the scale is and like mm -hmm. the notes and not just the fingers, you know, yeah. notes and fingers yeah. and stuff like that. If it's harmonic or melodic so or, you like know. you can have a little system. Let's say you have eight scales and the ones that you know well, maybe you make a little heart next to it saying like this one I know well doesn't mean you don't practice it. And then maybe the ones you know less, you make a star. So when you practice, start with the ones that w with have a star and maybe play, practice to two, three days, the those ones each. And then once you all know them, they all have a heart, then just go in yeah. a, make an X, you know, so you know that you practice them all. Because mm -hmm. maybe you won't have time to do all eight of them every day. So maybe you do four, four. But this way, you know where you are in yeah. your practice. This way, it helps to organize. So yeah. that's how I used to practice for preparing things, making little X's. So mm -hmm. I knew I had little systems, you know, little yeah. legend with mm -hmm. signs. So I knew, okay, I have to focus more on this and mm -hmm. always practice more what you have more difficulty in. Sometimes it's very tempting to just play what, what's easy and nice. And mm -hmm. it's cool. It can e even be a good warm up just to ease into it. But um if you want to be efficient with your time, it's a good thing to just Do it figure there. out yeah. what's difficult and go directly in the in that direction. In that direction, because mm -hmm. that's how it's gonna get easier. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Feeling yeah. frequent, yeah. And there's like even those are those are there's fun things to kind of do even during the summer without even practicing without your flute. You know, figuring out the theory of your scales. You know, circle of yeah. fifths, all those things, just so that you know, like, oh, this is that. You know, this is B flat major. This is E flat major. This yeah. is uh, A minor. Maybe read a book about theory. Yeah. You know, so you get it and learn uh, the order of sharps and flats. How to find mm -hmm. your scales rapidly. Oh, how yeah. to find the, you know, the um, 
um, relative minors, yeah. all those, then those things. Tools stay with you forever. Yeah. Like you, pr- you, you obviously really practice them through practice. If you have a stuff. piano, sometimes it's more visual yep. to oh, learn those so things. True. Maybe learn your scales one octave on yeah. the piano. If you have an electric piano, whatever, it doesn't matter. Even if you have a digital iPad and you put a piano yeah, on there, it's exactly. still gonna, it's still gonna do. You're still learning something it. for you, you know. Because visually, you see. Yeah. Like some for some people, it's easier to understand it like that. Yes, that's so true. And um yeah so and i think you should also way before your audition record yourself Mm -hmm. and play and as if it was the audition so you don't stop you just go for it and then you sit down and you really you listen with a pencil and you do as if you're another person you're Mm. a judge and you Mm -hmm. and that's good what you have to do is not say only what went wrong, but also write what went well. Yeah, what went good, yeah. So so you can say, oh, very good C major scale. Mm -hmm. Very good study, except the lines three and four needs to be worked on. Because if you know what's good, it's, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's not just about focusing on what needs to be practiced more. It's also about Mm. sick securing yourself like feeling Mm -hmm. more secure about what is going well and that's some that's a great gift to yourself to be Mm -hmm. just you know uh, self uh, evaluate that yeah a bit yeah because we tend to focus only on the negative Mm -hmm. and no and i have students that say i have a student who studied in the conservatory when she was young and and she says very often you're so nice you always say nice things you know and um, you always say what's going well when I play you something. And I said, of course, because if I don't tell you and maybe you think that it's not good, you're going to spend time working on it still. Exactly. And you might lose a lot of time practicing this thing that you master already. If mm-hmm. I tell you, oh, you've mastered this, it's then amazing. Then you don't have to worry about it. Mm-hmm. You just have to keep it up. But, mm-hmm. you know, and sometimes when we... It's like when you work on something, you get to a level where it's good and then you think it's not good enough and you go too far and mm-hmm. then you make it bad oh another yeah. way. So sure. that's why reassuring yourself is mm-hmm. a very good investment because you will lose way less energy in, tra- in working on things that are already very good. Mm-hmm. And you have to, it's not uh, being um, pretentious no. to know what you do well. No. There's nothing pretentious about knowing yourself. Mm-hmm. It's self-knowledge. It's mm-hmm. not you know Mm -hmm. there's nothing it's not bragging because you are doing it right yeah so because you're trying to play the thing you're trying to play the thing it you know you deserve to be playing it well you worked and you play it well good you know there's no um no need to uh worry about Mm -hmm. any of these things about we're not taught that enough i think Mm. well i wasn't you know to stop and say oh i'm good at this or i'm good at that mm-hmm. and it's not uh, yeah i don't say it in a sense of um bragging it's just about oh i'm confident about this mm-hmm. i don't have to worry about this it's just a calming thing mm-hmm. it's not about other people no no right, right. you know it's not yeah, to yeah, yeah. look better in front of someone else it's no, really it's to calm it's myself it's, a, yeah, like, it's just for progress too because yeah. you're, you're, it's just a progression chart you've got these done so now you can move on to the next thing and you can apply and it's not what's my next goal now yeah it doesn't have to be a difficulty level it's just another goal it could be another piece that's as equal of difficulty it's it's just about so you now have these tools to now be able to reproduce the music or whatever you're making creatively yeah so i would say that would be a good way to prepare Mm -hmm. and like this thing of recording yourself do it a few times and it really helps a lot because yeah. it's like doing the real edition now we have all recording devices now and and the microphone will can tell everything they can oh it, yeah. it, it doesn't need to be the best microphones in the world it doesn't need to be a zoom recorder or anything no. like that all these things that you see online it's really just put I've your phone in front of you very bad microphones I've done it on tape recorders i've done it on tape recorders and, <laughs> and i learned a lot from boxes, it you know like that's it and plus i feel like a stress from an audition or um or a concert or whatever you're preparing it's a bit like you have a basket of stress with the and whenever i do a practice i take a little bit of that stress away okay you know i play it i play it um as if you know it was the real thing i record myself i have a little bit of stress but i still get to the end maybe it's not perfect but i know now that i can get to the end and Mm. even if i make a mistake i'll be able to continue Mm -hmm. and then 
I let a week go on, I do it again, or I do it the next, next day. Time, yeah. But you know, every time I redo it, I take a little bit of stress away. Mm -hmm. Then when I get there, I've done it five times before. Yeah. I'm way less stressed than if it was the first time. Even if they were mock additions, mm -hmm. they still took... S they s it's like your subconscious doesn't know it's mock or something because mm -hmm. you still get the stress. And I really try to do almost like an actor and convince myself that I'm there. Right. And I visualize it. I visualize the judges or I yeah. visualize the so audience. That you can make the best, uh, so that you can make the best experience you can and come out of it happy no matter what the result. Yeah, and knowing that I can get to the end mm -hmm. might be a mistake there might be everyone's going to make mistakes anyways so don't judge yourself too harshly no I think you should judge yourself positively yeah. yeah and when you're doing it you're in the moment the note you missed three seconds ago it's in the past mm -hmm. or even half a second ago it's in the past you don't have any mental energy to waste on that note no now you think of what you're doing now in the next notes mm -hmm. so that's uh, that's what I would say for the cool. for that. Yeah, so I think that can that think that's it for this week <laughs> or this I month. I think so. Yeah. So and also we were talking about flute festivals and all yes. those things. Yes. Yeah. And we are organizing the flute con. Yeah, that's again. It's gonna be a bit uh, short notice, but because we're just kind of putting things together, but it will be in August, probably third week or fourth week of August. So it kind of you know maybe you'll you'll be just into school, but it'll be something maybe cool to kind of spend the weekend one day listening to flute, asking questions. It's gonna be your time uh, to come and play family online um, and uh, learn. Yeah. You know, so flutecon.com, so F L U T E C O N dot com. You can go there and register for the newsletter that will send out to everybody for all the, like, hopefully early birds enough. And then just to give you guys the head up, heads up, we're going to give people a couple days who sign up for the newsletter to uh, think it through and see what they want to do and uh, whether or not they want to play in the classes or um, listen in. So yeah. that's going to be cool. But remember, if everyone wants to listen in and no one wants to play, there's going to be no one to listen to. <laughs> just sure. saying <laughs> you have to like yeah. we it's cool to play and it's yeah. cool to listen in we're gonna, i hope we're gonna we have, have yeah a i think good uh, mix of everyone i think we're gonna have a good mix of everyone because we'll have little theme hopefully maybe we'll have one master class just about like excerpts and then maybe one master class about a certain types of pieces or whatever whatever the people give us one, so whatever we'll, the people um, give us yeah we're gonna see what how that's gonna go we're just organizing that right now and then um that and also again patreon uh you can go and check us out at patreon.com slash the flu channel and you can come and support this channel, uh, this show rather, and we have, I think about 12 or 13 people, a couple, I think it's over a hundred dollars already paying for this, uh, for this, um, show, which is great. Mm -hmm. And it helps us, uh, uh, discuss about all the things we've listened to and also talk to on the Patreon page and also obviously questions from the channel. And, uh, it's a great place to go and talk to us, um, more frequently. We tend to try to be on the channel all the time, but this is really a hub for, more people who want to help us out but also uh have more you know question like more yeah. intense questions that we can actually give we some time to cool things like uh, analyze my playing yeah, and, yeah. there's uh, different perks for sure like uh, a question you want us to make a video about yeah or, yeah. yeah you can yeah. there's a lot of different perks that you can yeah. definitely check out so there so that's available and then uh, go to our store, store.thefluechannel.com. Uh, hopefully we'll have some new stuff before school starts, some new merch, but we have lots of good merch there. Obviously the um, the uh, scale uh, ma the scale poster, which is really great, all the scales and uh, articulations and stuff like that, and fingerings, obviously. It's good for any student or teacher to put in their classroom or in their studio. It's really cool. A lot of people have bought it. We've been really, really happy about that. And then um, there's nothing really else, I don't think. Obviously, there's we a, have... Um, oh, maybe the rest was said in the beginning of that's the... That's right, yeah, at the beginning of the show. So, the show. yeah, you know, we have the Flute Center of New York, obviously. If you're looking for a flute uh, or piccolo or whatever type of flute instrument, you go to them. They actually just moved into a bigger facility, so they have even more space and more flutes. So if you go to flutes, the number four sale.com and you can order online uh three to four flutes and use our code tfc and that helps us tremendously and you can get a bunch of other perks like longer uh trial to try all the flutes um, longer warranty longer well. warranty of uh, i think an extra six months instead of 12 months it's 18 months and that uh helps us out a lot too and you can also call them too or go there and try them there and just say our code and that helps us out uh immensely 
And if you want private lessons with me, it's info at the food channel. Yeah, you can email us. Yeah. 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 Or yeah. with you or with Nicola. Yeah, yeah. You can definitely email us and we'll definitely, uh, if you have Skype or FaceTime or any of those types of things, we can definitely work with whatever you got. Uh, we'll set you up and there's bundles, but you can also have single lessons if you have something you want us to kind of here you play you know privately and give you pointers whatever you know you don't have to be part of, you can have a single off lesson if you, you don't want to. yeah you don't yeah. have to sign up for a long thing no. sometimes it's just uh, it's good to have retroaction yes sometimes it's good to have maybe two or three so yes because you get pointers and you work on it and, and you, you get, get another retroaction saying yeah. it's better now you know some people take like four and yeah. then they're good yeah and i can see after four yeah, they got pretty... M Some people are pretty advanced and are coming back and give exactly. a couple of pointers a couple of times and they're good to go for yeah. a, a while, you know. Maybe they'll come back in a year, mm -hmm. but they can practice on their own. Like some people want a lesson every week. Yeah. Some people want just totally. a couple. Yeah. And it's it's okay. Exactly. And if you want also, if you want to leave a comment or uh, even a little bit of your playing, if you want to leave a 30-second thing, go and download the Anchor app, A-N-C-H-O-R, and that's the platform we use to put our podcast on and there you can actually find our podcast you can even donate directly there if you want but you can leave messages like voice messages uh asking questions whatever and we can put them on the air and uh it would be really cool to hear you guys uh do that so you can go to anchor.com or go to the anchor app either on ios or on um android so and if you leave yeah. a nice review we might play it yeah, yeah <laughs> totally well even the reviews you can leave a review also obviously on itunes uh, that really helps us out a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. I think that's all there is to that. So yeah, be sure also to leave a comment too. You can also leave a comment underneath this video if you're watching it on YouTube. Um, but if you're anywhere else, make sure to go check out patreon.com and or the Anchor app. So yeah, um, also leave a thumbs up. That also helps too. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. See you guys. <laughs>